I think you've even, you've even answered. For what purpose did the early church fathers create the Christian Trinity doctrine? I think you've... Yeah, well, let's, let's answer that as a question. Okay. Um, so for what purpose did the early church fathers create the, Christ, the tr Trinity doctrine? Well, um, the best people are to answer that question would be them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because to be honest, I, I don't see any logical purpose <laughs> for the creation of a doctrine that alienates people from God and from themselves and from me and from... And I also miss, uh, has a, is a complete misunderstanding of the operation of the Holy Spirit. So mm. um, I feel that it, that it has created a lot of damage historically uh, towards the faith and the relationship with God of Christians generally. However, they did have very many purposes for creating it. The primary purpose is political expedience. Mm. There, there was a fragmenting empire and, the, and this empire, the, once the power base of an empire is fragmented, then the empire itself fragments. And if, if all of the power base disagree with each other, then of course there's going to be fragmentation of an empire. And Constantine was wise enough to see that. And so, so he decided he wanted to amalgamate the empire. Now, he, he could see the only way to amalgamate the empire was to have all of the people who were the important people in the empire believing the same things mm. or near the same things and to excommunicate and exile any person who didn't agree. Mm. That was his primary, primary concern. So from his perspective, it was a political reason for, for making the choice and decision. Is that what happened with the Orthodox churches? In, in there what? was a big split in the Christian Orthodox from, say, you know, the Orthodox Greek and there was... Well, that Eastern. happened much, much later. Much later. Yeah, so I'm talking now about the events that happened in three and 400 oh, okay. of AD. The events you're referring to started occurring in 12 and 1300 and, and, oh, and operated right the okay. way through to the 1700s and 1800s. Mm, okay. And that was an entirely new sort of, sort of fission mm. or, or breakup that occurred uh, in the... In the in the system of religion, Christian religion, because what happened is that the power base of the Catholic religion, the Roman Catholic Church, was now being challenged by all these alternate concepts. Luther and others would challenge these concepts. Of course, they all were violent challenges. Mm. Uh, eventually, they all, uh, most of them had violence in, involved where uh, initially the Catholic Church treated each of these as a cult until such a time as the power became so strong from mm. these particular religious movements that the Catholic Church could no longer treat them as a cult and so then recognise mm. them as an alternate religion, if you like. However, interestingly enough, many of the primary doctrines of Christianity all were formulated way back th a thousand years earlier. Mm. And in fact, this, for this reason, if you look at the statement of the Lutherans about tr the Trinity compared to the Catholics about Trinity, you'll find... And it's almost identical yeah. in terms of the way they yeah. believe the Trinity to be. And, and so we're talking here about God's nature. One mm. of the primary things we need to understand if we're going to have a relationship with God mm. is God's nature. And they're all defining God's nature in error based on a, the council, which was given by, for political expedience in 325. So, so if you examine the history of it all, which is very, very different from trying to justify the Trinity through the Bible. Mm. Oh, yeah. You, you can see that, that already by 300, there was a very firm concept that the Trinity was true. Now, of course, that meant that all of these glosses that were included in the subtexts of the, or the, if you like, the marginal statements that were made in different manuscripts now started to get incorporated into the texts. And this, of course, very damaging because uh, this, this now meant that the Bible itself started to mirror the inaccurate doctrine rather than just stating what it actually stated. Okay. And, uh, and of course, there were many, many hundreds of copies made before the text we have available. And so, of course, you know, there was also a great amount of distortion that was available to the copyists who had their own concepts about what should, it, should meant, it should have meant mm -hmm. in comparison to what actually happened. Bearing in mind, of course, that almost all the texts in the Bible were all written many years after my death. Mm. They were all already the recounting of the memories of the people involved. Now, 
Now, one thing you and I both know is that even right now today, I can make a statement today and tomorrow, even while I'm still alive, be quoted completely out yeah. of context. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I could see this occurring in the first century quite yeah. rapidly. In fact, yeah. I said in the book of Matthew, again, it's recorded there, I said that, that many would come along and distort my teachings completely. And many would believe that they are practicing the teachings that I gave when they were, were, were not. They were obviously not. And I said, and in fact, the way the Bible says it now is, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. You know, I meant to have said, uh, not actually what I said, but, um, you know, <laughs> this is the extension of, you know, the punishing God sort of thing that gets <laughs> yeah. imposed upon the belief as well. But I did say that there would be gross distortions of my words mm. because already when I was alive, mm. there was gross distortion of mm. my words. Mm. Um, you know, the Pharisees were constantly mm. distorting my words every single day and, and many of my own disciples were constantly distorting my words for their own ends mm. um, because they wanted me to mean that rather than yes. that because that meant that they'd have to change. Yes, yes. And, uh, and so, you know, you, even while I was alive on the, in the first century, there were a gross distortion of what I said. Very few people came up and asked me what I meant. And it, that happens frequently today, where mm. I say something, there's a, there's a, it's unclear maybe what I've said to some people. And so they come up and ask me and I can give them clar clarification. Mm. Many people don't hear those clarifications. Mm. And so they assume, they make assumptions. Mm. And this is a common human frailty. And it's something that happened way back then as well. Yeah. And as a result of that, we have all these assumptions upon assumptions, upon assumptions, upon distortions, upon... Chinese whispers, <laughs> and uh, as yes. the saying goes, and we end up with a whole mismatch yes. of information, some of which is true, some mm. of the truth has been retained, but others of which is grossly distorted mm. and manipulated mm. for the sake of people who want to re maintain power mm. as well. So the whole reason for the Trinity Doctrine was all about power. Mm. Mm. It was all about maintaining power in the fragmenting Roman Empire. Mm. And eventually, as you know, the Roman Emperor became the Pope. Mm. In other words, there was an amalgamation of religion and politics mm. into one position. And, uh, and this amalgamation, uh, had, you know, of course, was historically before my coming also present. Yeah. Most people who were in politics were also high members of the religious faith, mm. otherwise they would never have gotten voted into mm. politics mm. Uh, or, or been able to sustain their position in politics. And so this has always been the case where politics and religion often has been, uh, there's a very, often yeah. very blurred line between the two. And many of the religious leaders historically were also the politicians historically. Mm. Very similar to how it is in the Muslim mm. world today. That's right. In fact, yeah. Yes. So power, I feel, in the end, was the primary motivation for the adoption of the Trinity Doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now, um, unfortunately, it could have been anything they adopted. Mm -hmm. It just happened to be that particular that, doctrine that they had adopted. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm.